The thing that bothers me the most in the fitness industry right now is that it seems like everyone are just jumping on the high intensity training bandwagon without knowing a shit about what they're doing. They just hear a YouTuber or someone on Instagram telling them that Mike Menthor and Jay Cutler took every set to failure while they actually didn't. Someone like Jay Cutler did a lot of sets at RP6 or 7 before the set he took to failure. So a lot of you might think that this is just junk volume, doesn't do anything, but you're wrong. People are just so fed up with always going harder than last time and wonderly the kicks they get from actually changing their training hard and taking sets to failure. That extra volume is going to do a lot for the body. It's going to create a lot of adaptions and it's a lot of work that's not going to get you too fatigued, which is a really good thing. Also, there are studies from even last year from Scarpelli et al. showing that increasing the volume in trained individuals, in, in trained individuals by 20% related to what they were doing before, that led to a significant amount of muscle growth. So this again shows that volume are, are still the, um, the king when it comes to hypertrophy. One of the things I like to do instead of always driving up the effort and the intensity is to look at volumizing, which is basically doing more sets because that's the fastest way to increase volume, which is basically workload. To get stronger, you progressively overload. You have to have to lift more combined weight. Each training, each week, each month, each year, um, compared to what you have done before. So what I would have my clients do is do three sets at like RP8 in the first week, then do four sets in the next week, and then fifth set after that. Then we would actually regress back and be able to build up again with while using um, heavier weights. So this works extremely well. It's doing a lot of sets like that up to like 20 sets per muscle group up towards that can still work extremely well because you're not going taking every set to failure. The only reason people are seeing, uh, seeing good results from basically fucking having the volume, having the amount of sets they're doing is because they didn't train anywhere near failure after. And, and that's why the thing that now all this high intensity training are effective because now they're seeing results, but basically it just comes down to what you did before wasn't effective at all. And if you actually did that with a high enough RPE, so around maybe like RPE 8, it will give you even better results. There's also just so many things you have to be aware of when trying to find the right amount of volume for someone. If you have someone that is two meters tall, you're not gonna make him do the same work for squats as someone who is 160 centimeters tall. Because this guy, he's gonna have a lot, a lot of more distance to travel for each rep. You can have him doing the same amount of, um, of sets or the same amount of reps or the, or the same intensity because he's going to get beaten up over time. You also have to look at the individuals, what they have done before, how is, how is their frequency li like right now, how is their volume like, how is their intensity like, and then make slow increases from that. So starting the, at the point they're at right now, maybe slowly either increase the the effort or increase the volume, adding a set or two here or there in the, the things where they, where, they, where you want them to focus on the weaknesses. And then, and then also the exercises they're doing, it's going to be way harder to do high volume on a, and especially close to failure on something like um, on a front squat, freestanding free front squat with a barbell than in something like a hack squat. Like even though I can kill myself like completely with my quads in a hack squat where, to the point where I fail the rep and then do a drop set after, after that um, to failure again. Like my, my legs are going to be dead but my breath is, is barely up. Like 20 seconds later I can, um, I can do nasal breathing and that's because I'm used to doing so many damn hard sets with just a bubble on my neck. It's a whole different sensation. It's a lot harder. When I did last last two, um, two weeks ago, when I did um, four sets of eight um, one and a half rep front squats with one hundred fifteen kg, I would literally 
wait like 15 minutes in between the sets because that how much um, I needed to wait before my heart rate rate was like getting all the way down and by that point it wasn't even all the way down I just couldn't wait any longer because it would be ludicrous I would have to wait like 30 minutes be before feeling like 100% rested and I don't have that much time so doing hard shit like that just doing it in this extreme amount of volume but increasingly it's, it's sensitive it, it in a sensible way to how much your body are able to um, recover from it's gonna lead to way better results than basically just dying to take everything to failure and, and halving the number of sets you're doing. Also not to mention, if you just start taking every set to failure without having done it before, you're running an, ex an extreme risk of getting injured. So there's a, there's a lot of things you have to consider here with what you're doing. But let me know your take on it and I'll see you all next time.